the first thing we need to do in solving a problem is to focus on the right problems. We're surrounded by problems and challenges um, and one of the difficulties is picking out the ones that will make uh, the most significant difference. Leaders, this is your job. Um, people, are, uh, people are experiencing pr little problems, big problems. There are potential problems. There are things on the horizon. There are potential problems, the, the economic changes, uh, all sorts of things that are surrounding us. Leaders need to help their people to focus on the ones that we have control over, that we can influence, that, that can make a difference. So step number one is to focus our attention on particular problems. Now, a number of different ways of doing this, for example, SWOT analysis, uh, doing an analysis of our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, our threats. Um, we could sit down and look at uh, what are the, the, our success factors, what are the ways that we know that we're being successful and you know, what, what are the problems with that. Um, we can look at the internal challenges, we can have a look at external challenges and threats that are, that are coming our way uh, and so on. The one that I want to share with you uh, today is one you may not have come across. Um, uh, this is called web charting. Uh, and it's not web as in uh, a website, it's more like a spider's web. Um, and I, I use this with, uh, with teams and groups when, uh, that I'm working with um, when we need to work out, first of all, what's the correct agenda? What are the things we really need to, uh, to pay attention to? And I'll brainstorm with people on all of those things that I've talked about. I might do a SWOT anal analysis, I might just brainstorm and keep throwing them questions about uh, what's, uh, what's around them. Uh, what kind of things they may focus on. I'll also take them through a process of getting the group to agree uh, on um, maybe three current issues. So uh, there's a consensus process to, to be gone through. Uh, what I like to do here, uh, let me share this tip with you, uh, is when we've brainstormed, give everybody quiet time. Give everybody in the room a couple of minutes for their own personal opinion with no discussion to choose their personal choice of the three things that most need to be resolved and now. What do we most need to focus on today? Get everybody in the room individually to choose that. Second, a uh, group of six people or eight people, uh, eight people, there's 24 uh, topics being chosen. So the next thing is to get them to pair up. Um, so you've got four pairs uh, together, just for example. Their challenge is to share, uh, so my three, my choice of three topics, what's your choice of three topics, why have you chosen those? Let's agree on the three things that the two of us uh, agree we, that this team really needs to work on right now. So between us we've already understood what we're, what we're passionate about, what we really believe and why, and we agree three. Now we've got three, the pair beside us have got three, we do the same thing again while the other four are discussing uh, and we boil it down to again a choice of three topics. And then with the other group we do it once more and we end up with three topics and it may change altogether. What I find when I go through this process is that almost invariably communication uh, is one of those three topics. Uh, it's one of those things that we need to get better at and resolve. Let me, so let me use communication as the basis of this example uh, of web charting. Um, I'll put the central problem in the middle here. I'll put a little bit of a circle around it. Um, and with the group uh, in front of me, I'll say, so communication is an issue that we need to work on now. We're not going to move straight ahead and try and find strategies for improving it because first we need to understand what's causing the communication problem. And this is really important. Communication, this is the symptom, not the underlying cause. So what's causing those communication difficulties? And I'll get people to throw out all of their ideas. So it might be this, it might be that, it might be this reason, it might be that reason, it may be this reason, it may be that, and it may be that. And you know, there are all sorts of things come out of the group. Next thing uh, is I'll ask them to tell me um, from this cause, 
uh, of our communication difficulties, what causes that? And it may be this, it may be this, it may be, it may be actually this is one of the causes. And we do it again with this, that, that, oh yeah, and that. Uh, what about this? What's causing that? This, 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 uh, and so on. And eventually uh, we end up uh, with something that looks like a spider's web. And it's pretty messy uh, creating it. But looking for the causes and the causes, you know, what's really outside here, what always emerges is that there are themes. There are, there are underlying causes that, that end up with us not being able to communicate as effectively as we can. And what that tells us is that the strategies we generate at the end of the day need to solve these underlying causes. If we just went out and said, well, let's communicate better and let's work out how to do that, and it didn't address uh, these underlying themes, the solution wouldn't work, or if it did temporarily, it wouldn't stick. We've got to start with under understanding the underlying causes. And the purpose of the web chart here is not just to identify the topics, it's to get under the skin of those problems and really get a, 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 the whole group really understanding where it's coming from. And what we really need to solve is this, and then communication. Uh, try that with your team. Uh, if you get the opportunity and, and let's see how that goes. Uh, some of the clients that I've worked with in the past have done a, a, uh, come up with ways of adapting this, that they, uh, once a month, for example, instead of having a team meeting with an agenda, they have a, a, an agenda-free meeting. They start with a blank sheet of paper and ask, the, ask their team, what is it we really need to talk about right now? They do the brainstorm, they prioritize it, and then that's their agenda for the day. Maybe that's a six-month review uh, process that you could do. Um, and taken the other way, one team leader that I worked with uh, came up with another great idea, which was to do this just verbally with his team uh, at the start of every shift. Uh, what is it we really need to focus on today? And to get everybody in the group to think about that and to, to identify one or two things that was the team's focus for the day uh, and to understand uh, what they really needed to be working on. And what happened there was that their team decided to turn up for work 15 minutes early every single shift so that they could have this conversation and then get on to work. Um, voluntarily turning up early for a meeting. Uh, how often does that happen? Uh, and in their case it happened every single shift voluntarily because they wanted and they found a lot of value in having this conversation. Uh, so step number one is Choose your focus. Focus on the things where you can really make a difference. Decide, instead of all of the clutter of potential problems that we might work on, identify the ones that will really make a difference and then understand the problem and what's really causing it.